Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Cop Out Plymouth Duster Funny Car, a design by Tom Daniel, in 124th scale. It's a Revell model kit, number 85-4093. It's a skill level 2 kit for the average builder, and it was molded in black, chrome, and clear with 98 pieces. It features the tech of the 70s duster and funny car conversion and includes a tubular frame, a roll cage, a firewall, fuel and water tanks, and a blown 426 engine. It's got dual drag chutes to stop and it's decked out with roof flashers and gumball lights. It also has some sponsor decals. It's a really fun model to build. And it also includes two soft vinyl wrinkled race master drag slicks and two non-labeled front tires along with the old school direction sheet. The finished dimensions are about eight and a quarter inches long, three inches wide, and two and a quarter inches high. Here are the contents of this kit. As you can see, the um, parts are bagged so they don't get marred by the uh, tires. And it comes with some colorful uh, decals, uh, and that's up to you on how you want to display. But um, I want you to keep in mind, we'll be using Model Master liquid cement for most of construction some super glue for strength in fragile parts, and white glue to install or clear glue for the windows. Now remember, heed the manufacturer's suggestions for safety when you're using any of the products that you hear or see in the review. To begin with, uh, I did some body prep, um, and there's a small um, mold line there at the uh, quarter panel pillar, and I sanded that off with some fine sandpaper. It was about a 800 grit and remove that line. And because it was fairly flat panel, uh, I just used uh, some nail polishers to uh, smooth it out completely. Now these come with different grits uh, right on the same uh, same bar, so you can use them progressively until you get to the finest one to really smooth it out and make for a nice smooth finish for uh, paint. And finally, I used some car wax to. Um, really smooth it out and make it a nice smooth finish. I went over the entire body uh, with a uh, fine sanding pad. Uh, it's about a 2000 grit. Something to just give the paint a little bite. And then I sprayed the entire thing uh, with some Duplicolor primer, um, allowing a few minutes between coats, about 10. And then finally uh, a nice wet coat, followed by um, once once that was dry, uh, and I let that dry about a half an hour, uh, I went over it with a Duplicolor Black Metallic. And then, uh, once again, about 10 minutes between the initial coats, and then uh, some finally some wetter coats until I got a good coverage. Then I let that dry completely. Once the paint was completely dry, uh, I went over and polished it out with once again with some car wax to give it a nice sheen and smooth finish. I then applied some bare metal foil to the bumpers uh, and uh, that's really pretty easy. It's like tape. Um, you just cut some of the foil product uh, off about uh, a little larger than the size of your feature. You stick it on like tape, tamp it down, and then you trim off the excess with a real sharp hobby knife. Locate some of the interior parts like the uh, cockpit shroud and I painted that silver over the raw plastic and then as soon as that was done, uh, I placed it in the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes. And that gives the paint a faded look, so it almost looks like a bright uh, aluminum. Now after that, uh, I removed it from the freezer and then let it uh, air out and rubbed it with a clean cloth to uh, just make sure that it was nice and, and subtly smoothed. To get the rest of the parts here, uh, as you can see, the frame rails and uh, the uh, braces and bulkheads. And um, of course, the, um, the brace there, this main one, and the bulkheads were painted with the same silver technique that I used uh, on the floor pan. And I didn't paint the rails, however. Uh, these were left unpainted because they're just the right color. And then uh, they glue together very nicely in this manner. So assemble the, uh, the cage here for the chassis. Here are the four pieces for the rear end section, and uh, it's pretty generic. You've got your uh, pumpkin, and the coils are attached to the radius or the 
wheelie bars there. So uh, the chrome has to be scraped away from the gluing points so that you get a good bond. Okay, and then uh, just line everything up. Make sure that it's straight and stay straight uh, after you glue the pieces together. I used super glue here for strength. Uh, there's about 14 parts uh, to build the engine up. So assemble the engine halves and the cylinder heads. And then the uh, blower manifold was assembled together and painted uh, the block orange to, to show the Hemi 426 basic color. Once that's dry, the blower assemble assembly and the uh, the rocker covers are put on and uh, it looks pretty good when the motor is complete. Now we're going to go out of sequence a little bit here and put the engine into place. It's easier to make sure that the engine is positioned properly uh, if there's nothing in the way. So go ahead and do that. Scrape the paint uh, where the engine uh, sits on the mounts and install the engine making sure it's square and it's uh, uh, perpendicular vertical there. Now uh, the directions call for the you know, fuel tanks to be put in, but uh, we're going to put those in after the engine is placed. And to make them look flush and even, we're going to uh, drill the holes out a little bit for those uh, for the fuel tank and the cross member there brackets. It, and it just helps everything uh, line up a little bit better than uh, making sure that there's no flash in the holes. So it's uh, starting to look complicated. We're going to install that rear end assembly, and it's actually turns out to be pretty easy. First the floorboard panel was slid uh, through the chassis upper and lower side rails uh, to the lower underside panel. And then the rear end and the drive shaft which were previously assembled were put into place. You just push them into position and there's really clear location points so they lined up nicely and they fit perfectly. Now the floorboard uh, must go in first so that the drive shaft can slide through the hole in it. Next thing that we'll do is to um, put the uh, floor pan and the firewall into place and the, the transmission mission tunnel needs to be pieced together. So first the floor pan and then the firewall and after that's in place the steering components like you know the steering wheel and the, and the column there went in without any problems. So go ahead and get those installed. There are clear location points for these parts and the direction sheet's pretty clear to show you where they go into place. Remember to scrape the plating off before you glue the pieces. Next, next we'll add the uh, blower belt and um, you put that onto the engine uh, but make sure that the engine is dry and firmly glued into place. Then you just uh, slide the, working from the underside, you, you slide the belt up uh, over the main crankshaft pulley and then up to the blower drive and uh, it fits well and looks good. Now we can put those fuel tanks into place so locate those and uh, they're made up of two parts so you have to um, assemble the halves and uh, there's going to be a seam but the only other way to deal with that is to finish them off, uh, remove the chrome and then re-chrome them or paint them. Um, so I in this case, I'm just putting them together so that you see their location and where they're placed. So here's where we are in the uh, subassembly. As you can see, this is going together well. And the, uh, of course, the engine and drivetrain and the roll cage is uh, put into place. It's time to locate the, uh, the front steering linkage and pieces. And so the, you remove them carefully from their trees because they're fragile and they'll break. Uh, I would use a nice, nice pair of sprue cutters, uh, uh, a fine point sprue cutter to get those off, make sure you don't break them. The drag link, the tie rods, and the steering link, um, and the sway bar, they're all very fragile. So you'll have to be patient when you remove those. They fit perfectly, uh, but uh, you need to really study the directions and look at the pictures here to see how they go together and where they're placed. Uh, patience is uh, important and there's a lot of chrome parts that you'll have to scrape uh, without breaking or damaging the pieces uh, but to use some super glue for strength uh, once you've located the gluing points and gotten those uh, test fits so you know where they go. So go ahead and find the tires and uh, these are nice wrinkled slicks and they really look good if you do some special work to them. So go ahead and uh, uh, clean those up after you remove them from the sprue and get them ready to uh, to work with. The first thing to do is to uh, use some some super glue to um, put the two halves of the uh, rear slicks uh, together and then I use some black electrical tape uh, to tape carefully around the tread area 
and uh, lay it down nice and smooth. Make sure that the edges are in the right place. And the tape is wider than the tire, so then we'll use a uh, an exacto blade and rotate the tire and trim that tape off to about where the tread area would end on the uh, tire. So with a little light pressure, you can go around the tire. Now the tires then will look pretty smooth, and the tape line is hidden uh, at the bottom of the tire. So we'll leave it down there. We're going to um, assemble the tire or the wheels to the tires now. Uh, of course, the uh, the rears uh, are a little deeper than the fronts, and then the wheel backs. Uh, you know, you'll want to paint those black. Um, so go ahead and put those together and get them ready for staging. The three pieces out: uh, the seat tub and the upper cage assembly, and then. Uh, they're pretty simple. They go right together, of course. And the belts were covered, colored with um, like some silver, silver sharpies to make those look, uh, the buckles look realistic. Locate your gluing points and fit the tub into the chassis. And the top of the cage goes to the back of the tub and to the chassis bars. Okay. And then this is one place where it's important to kind of test fit, make sure everything lines up so that you know where the parts go before, you know, you add glue and put them into place. With the uh, chassis finished, you can put the tires on, uh, pop those onto the axle spindles, and everything looks really good. Um, if, if you need to do a little twist to make sure that all four tires uh, match and hit the floor, you can, you can do that at this time. Be careful, though, uh, just to make sure you twist it enough for that to happen. Get the uh, interior body panel and uh, mock that up and make sure that you know where the gluing points are. And you also have to, of course, remove paint. Uh, as well as chrome so that the um, you get a good bond when you glue parts together. So install that into place now. Now it's time to assemble the light bar and it's got an amazing 14 pieces uh, for this assembly. Uh, so get those out of the kit and uh, everything is pretty well um, uh, indicated in the instructions on, on parts layout and where the gluing points are and where they go. So uh, line that up with your uh, instructions. And then uh, the red and the blue under the bubbles were done with the Sharpie marker for some detail and made the chrome look like a, like a clear or colored plastic, just like the real thing. Everything goes together pretty well and looks good. Just uh, glue them sparingly. Don't use a lot of cement and uh, put that together. Now it's time to turn our attention to the decals. And these gorgeous decals are quite large. So I strongly suggest uh, that you use some warm water when you remove them. Uh, and then after about a 30 second soak, let them set about a minute to make sure that they loosen up very well. You don't want to start moving these decals and find some of it still attached. So I strongly suggest you use um, some of the setting solutions available on the aftermarket, like the micro scale products. And you, you simply use a considerable amount of warm water on both removing and a little bit on the model itself. And then also uh, you use the microset type of solution to paint where you're going to put the decal, slip it into place, move it around, smooth it out, make sure there's no air or water bubbles trapped underneath them. And then put some of the top solvent on there to seal them into place and conform to contours. And once you get that done, it's up to you. I usually put a, um, a coat of clear over the top of the decals to make sure that they uh, stay in place and, and blend in more with the paint. Now these um, decals worked pretty well and uh, overall they fit on the body lines and they're, they're smoothed out nicely but they, um, they will still you know get popped uh, a little bit over the black finish uh, and go into place without any issues. After the decals and or the clear coat have dried at least overnight then you can go ahead and install the light bar. It fits right into place uh, where it should and it looks great. Set the body onto the chassis and there you have it, a completed model. This model looks outstanding. Here's a driver's side view and we'll give you some more of those. There's passenger side and rear views, but this kit was great. Uh, it's a lot of fun to build and what a concept. Tom Daniel had one of the most uh, fertile imaginations in the design world. Everything went together in this kit, fit almost perfectly, just a couple of minor tweaks, but always remember to test fit everything. Uh, the, till, the number two skill level is just about right, uh, although if you don't,
pay attention, you can get into trouble with the decals. A more experienced modeler wouldn't have any issues, and he may even want to add some detailing. So, if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook and at our website, though, right on replicas.com. Thanks.